What is going on everybody? Noah with Madison Angling and before I even start this video, I'm gonna apologize. I'm sorry guys, I know I haven't been putting out videos. I've been crazy busy with guiding and my computer decided it didn't wanna edit videos anymore. So I'm trying to keep this one as short and sweet as possible so I can actually get it edited <clears throat> and uploaded for you guys. So thank you guys for hanging in there with me. Please bear with me, there's a lot more videos coming. Just working on the tech stuff at the moment to try to make that happen, but anyway, Today I kind of wanted to answer one of the questions I get asked most frequently, uh, both in the comments on these videos and also just while we're out fishing, and that is, how do you solo net a muskie? Now, I want you guys to keep in mind, what I'm gonna show you today is what works for me, it works in my boat, my layout. You can do this so many different ways and it's all very dependent on your style of fishing, what net you have, and the layout of your boat, or if you're not even fishing from a boat, you know, maybe you're fishing from shore, that it's all, totally dependent on your situation. So that being said, keep that in mind, but I'm gonna show you the two different ways that I like to solo net muskies while I'm fishing alone in my boat. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna show you guys here is the way I used to do this, and it still works great. I have a different solution for netting them myself now. It's a little riskier, but it's worked just fine for me. But this is what I used to do, and it works awesome. And I highly recommend this to anybody that does a lot of solo fishing that maybe struggles with net jobs. And it's this bad boy right here. That is an offshore tackle downrigger release clip. Same thing you put on a 10 pound lead ball and send down for salmon and trout. All I have is a couple of zip ties there holding this thing on. And as you can kind of see here, you squeeze that, the jaws kind of open and close. So what we're gonna do is we're going to clip the bag of the net into our downrigger release clip. And what that does is the same thing you do if you're netting someone else's fish for you is holding the bag. You obviously don't want to have the bag just hanging in the water. It's a great way to get hooks snagged to it and lose fish. So instead of trying to hold the bag to the net handle while you're trying to fight a fish with one hand and net with the other, now you don't have to worry about that. It's all self-contained. So when you go to scoop, the tension or rather the resistance of that water when the bag hits the water pulls the net free from the clip, the fish goes in the bag, done deal. Muskie is netted. It's an awesome way to do this when you're learning how to solo net. Uh, I've used it for a long, long time. I still use it occasionally. <clears throat> I will say it's somewhat dependent on your style of net. Uh, that being said, you know, this net, this is a ranger net. I've got a fine mesh, kind of a lighter bag on it, which I really like for solo netting. It's a very light net, very easy to manipulate with one hand while you're fighting a fish with the other. So that's another thing to consider is, is having a light net that's easy to manipulate by yourself with one hand. Um, but you'll have to play around a little bit with how much of that netting material you put into that downrigger release clip. Uh, that's gonna make a difference on whether or not it's going to easily release or not, or if it releases too easy. So the best solution for really getting comfortable with this, and not just with this system, but just netting fish by yourself, period, is to practice. So if that means netting pike, netting bass, as silly as that may sound, every single time you net a fish by yourself, you're shortening that learning curve and it's gonna make it way easier when you do actually hook a big muskie and you're fishing alone. So that is method number one. Uh, I'm a big fan of this. I use this for several years. Works awesome, very highly recommend this. And I will have these downrigger releases linked in the description below. Um, make sure you get the offshore tackle ones. Uh, I've, I've tried a few other different kinds of downrigger releases. These seem to work the best. So if you want to pick these up, I will have them linked down below. All right, guys. So that's kind of the, the gist of the downrigger release clip thing. It'll work anywhere in the boat. Uh, but now this, this method's a little more specific to the way that I like to fish and more specific to the layout of my boat. So I have an 18 foot deep V tiller. Love this boat for musky fishing. Nice wide open platform. But when I'm fishing, I always fish out of the back here. I've got my trolling motor foot pedal back here. I've got my graph back here. This is where I'm most comfortable fishing. So when I know that I'm going to be fishing back here, I have to have a plan. I know that when I net a fish, I want to net it on the left side of the boat where I'm fishing. And I typically like to net it off the front deck. There's a lot of stuff to trip on and fall on back here. You got a seat right there, storage compartment here. You know, there's the transom right there. You got your graph here. I want as unobstructed of an area to net a fish as possible. So I typically will net the fish off the front deck there. So what I like to do when I'm fishing alone now, I still do use the, the downrigger thing, but more often I do it this way. I don't know if it just got lazy or 
<laughs> or what, but this works really well. Um, I just set my net just like this, right on the gunnel of the boat. I've got it across the seat right here, and I have a real easy grab to get to this net when it's time to net a fish. So there's a couple things to consider with this. One, I already know someone's gonna comment this below. You've got your net hanging over the side of the boat. That's a bad idea. You could get hooks stuck in it while you're fighting a fish. Yes, but I'm taking that as a calculated risk. So notice, the majority of the bag I actually have laying right in the middle of the gunnel. And if you look over here, the bag's actually not in the water. It's a solid eight inches above the water. And I got about the same amount of net inside the boat here. Another thing you wanna consider is where you're setting this net down. So I have retractable cleats, which are you know way up ahead of where I've got the net here. I have a ram mount for my trolling motor stabilizer. I've got that far ahead from where the net is. And all I really have back here is a rod holder mount, my fuel fill, and my track system, my fin gear track system. So what I used to have on here were like ranger style rails with my, my rod holder bases permanently attached to it, which are magnets for net. So I went to this track system and now there is nothing here for this bag to get caught on. There's just nothing here to get caught on. So when I scoop a fish, real easy, just right over the side of the boat, and it all comes down to timing. So you have a little bit more forgiveness with that downrigger clip being able to, you know, if, you, if you're going for a scoop and it's not right, pull it back out and you may not drop the bag. Uh, the bag's already dropped on this one. So basically you have one shot at getting that fish in the net and you have to be very, very careful about when you make that, when you make that scoop. So this works well for me. It took a lot of practice, a lot of time to get this right. Trust me, I screwed up plenty of times, but I've got a pretty consistent system now worked out for myself where I can just have the, the net laying right here and I know I'm gonna net the fish right here. No matter what that fish does, I'm gonna bring it right here and scoop that fish. It's clear of any obstructions. There's nothing for the net to get snagged on. And that's pretty much the biggest part of this is making sure that you have quick, easy access to the net and you have a plan. Uh, that includes tools, guys. So have your, your pliers, your hook cutters, your you know, jaw spreaders, uh, your gloves, have them all right next to where you plan on netting your fish. So everything's right there, easy to get to. You can handle the fish as minimally as possible. Get your pictures, get your measurement, get that fish back. And uh, that's pretty much the gist of it, guys. So please, if you have any more questions, please drop them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them. And I hope this at least helped a couple people out. It at least gave you a few ideas for how you can better net fish by yourself. It, no matter what, it's not always the easiest thing to do, but it just takes practice. So take the opportunities. If you catch a pike or a bass or something, practice. Go ahead and scoop them. I know digging hooks out of a net when you have a little pike in there isn't fun, but every time you do this, it's just gonna help you get better and better and better and more confident when the time comes to net a big muskie. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please comment below if you have any questions or suggestions. Share your ideas with other people. I, I love I love the comments. I love suggestions. Drop them down below. You never know. They could really help somebody out. So thank you guys so much for watching. I have plenty more videos on the way. I promise I will see you guys on the next one.